Candace, what's going on? Um, in the process of that, I was still able to watch the Geechee and Easy battle, and I did my initial recap. But what I want to start doing now, um, because I feel like it's doing a disservice if you don't go watch it back and um, analyze things again. So I got to really watch the battle again and really break things down and analyze it. And um, first and foremost, let me say this. I have no interest in battling Easy. I still think Easy is one of the hottest people in battle rap. I still think Easy is one of the greats. I still think Easy has a promising battle rap career. Uh, I don't have no hate for Easy. Wish no malice to Easy. None of that. It's never that serious for me. It's battle rap. Um, but I do want to say I still feel like this is a clear loss from after I watched the bat, and it's a couple reasons why. The reason why I feel like this battle is a clear loss for him is because one, like I said on my first recap, when you when you talking through so humble, hear me out. I know, I know, I know you part of the E Hive. You might be the wasp. We gotta find a mother bee. You know what I mean? The carpenter B, you know, the bumble. I know it's a lot of y'all different variations. So, you know, hopefully, hopefully we can get to, you know, everybody over here by the end of this live, man. So first and foremost, right? This is why I would say he lost the battle. Because a lot of people watch battles. And when they watch battles, they sometimes only pay attention to the lyrics. The lyrics are a high part in a battle. But people's facial expressions, people's emotions, people's attitude tell the story sometimes better than the actual rhymes. So you can't tell me that somebody this whole time, that main thing was, he's documented saying this. This is why I try to say, when I do my recaps, when I speak, I only speak from a logical standpoint. A lot of people don't live off of logic. A lot of people don't move off of logic. A lot of people move off of emotion. That goes for women and men. So for those people, this is not going to apply to you because you're not going to be able to register it because you're coming from an emotional standpoint. From a logical standpoint, you can't... One of your key things when you battle can't be, yo, I don't like people that talk during my round. That was a pivotal thing he said. He said Rex did it. He said Sean did it. He said Goods did it. He said Calico did it. He said... um. He said almost everybody he battled did it. So now when you're in a battle and you're doing that every single round, almost every single bar, you've lost the battle already because you're being a walking contradiction. You said they're talking through my rounds because they're losing. So why are you talking through his rounds? Then you have a whole angle, right? And I'm, y'all know me. I stay out the messy stuff. I don't care about it. We're just going to sum all of it up to battle rap angles, right? You have a whole angle about this guy not taking care of his kids. You got a whole angle about him possibly doing some type of telling. And then when he turns around and has his angle, you're upset, but you just went to a whole different dimension. So those intangibles alone showed me who the winner was. You look like a sore loser. You can't, first of all... Me personally, right, I'm not going to go off of what I do because I don't talk through anybody's rounds because I, I feel the same way. I feel like when you talk through people's rounds, you're upset, you're mad, you're emotional. You know what I mean? No matter how you call the Jerry battle, right, because that's my last battle, I, I have the utmost respect for my opponent every time I get in the ring. So when he's talking through rounds, when he's getting emotional, when he's, you know what I mean, basically doing what he doesn't want Geechee to do to him, to me, that's a loss. Now, if we go to the material, right? <clears throat> I understand that people that are easy fans or people that think easy won the battle, you're going to go with the first two rounds. You know why? Because the first two rounds are the rounds that you can argue. But what I like to tell people is certain battles, right? A battle is a feeling. Certain battles are not determined on the winner by rounds, even though I have Geechee with two out of three rounds, but I'm going to do both scenarios. The feeling you get, right, if the first two rounds are close, for the people that have easy to block winning, if the first two rounds are close, they cancel each other out. The only definitive round in this battle is the third round, 
which is considered a put down, like when Sugar Shane put Mayweather down, or it's considered a knockout, like when Bud Crawford put out Errol Spence and the fight gets stopped. That's what that third round from Geechee is. So the first two rounds, we can all admit they're not clear. Right? When I mean clear, I don't mean like you don't have somebody you picked. I mean, it's not clear like the third. The third, it's nothing to argue about. A Geechee hater gives him the third round because you can't argue it. The first two rounds, if you're an easy fan, you're going to argue it. But they're close. So my whole thing is, if there's one deciding round, then that's the round that determines the battle, which is the third. And the third is a knockout round. The third is a round... You can see his fit. He looks defeated. So then you have to go over the third round. Right? In my opinion. Now, I'll say this. The reason why I got Geechee almost every round after watching it back is because this is what happened in the battle, in my opinion. In my opinion, I feel like Easy, all his rounds started up and they went down. I feel like all Geechee's rounds started and they went up so if you look at every round from Geechee his last two minutes and 30 seconds is a heat up point to where I feel like it edges him the first two rounds just my opinion mm -mm, mm -mm. the first two rounds right because this is the thing everybody looks at battle rap and feels like every situation in battle rap, you imply the same things. It's not a close battle. It's not a close battle. I'm going to tell you why it's not a close battle. It's not a close battle because <clears throat> you live by the gun and you die by the gun. Right? So this whole time, and again, I don't know if it's true. I don't know if it's not true. I don't care. Right? I'm not going to do a debate about what another person is. I don't care. What I am saying is this, your first round is a walking contradiction. The female details line, this whole time you've been saying nothing happened. So why are you doing a hypothetical if something happened in the first round, but then in the third round you say his whole round is a lie? Let's make sense of this. If nothing happened, why do I need to give a hypothetical bar about if this did happen and I did not get knocked out? And the only reason why it's allowed is because I still got the girl. If none of it happened, why, why, we, why are we doing a hypothetical bar? And then turn around and say the whole third round about him saying it did happen is a lie. That To me, that's what turns it into a clear definitive win. Because if we're going off of bars, it's subjective. If we're going who talks better drug shit, it's a subjective battle. It's a close battle. If we're going off of... Whose delivery is better? It's subjective. If we're going off of the storyline of the battle, it's the whole time nothing has happened to me. You guys are lying. You guys are making this up. You guys hate me. You guys want to see my downfall. But then you have a bar that indicates that something happened. And then when the person brings up that round about that something happening, you say it's a lie. What I'm saying to you, just opinion is, that's what I'm saying. Everybody's not listening. I don't know who's lying or telling the truth. But if the whole time somebody says DNA, and it, listen, this is a perfect analogy. If the whole time I say, yo, my tooth did not get knocked out because somebody punched me. It got knocked out because I had a cavity. If that's what I've been screaming the whole five months, yo, I promise you my tooth ain't get knocked out because somebody hit me. Y'all niggas is crazy. Y'all hate me. Y'all want to put me in shit, put my name in the ground. I lost my tooth from eating too much candy, right? It's funny, but I'm using it as an analogy. Then I get in the battle and say, hypothetically, if somebody did knock my tooth out, it wouldn't matter because I stood up after that. And then the whole third round is about DNA. You've been lying about your tooth getting knocked out because of a cavity. It got knocked out because somebody knocked you out. At this point, you're making my lie the truth. So even if you said the female bar because you want a reaction, you don't know inadvertently you just made my story look like it's true, whether it's true or not, because you just basically said, quote unquote, something happened. So now I don't need to decipher if Geechee's telling the truth or a lie because you already gave validity to the story by saying if I did get knocked out, the only reason why I let it slide is because... I got the female. So it's a hot bar. It gets a lot of reaction, but that's also the bar that loses you the battle because now you're making everything. Now you sound like a liar. You should have never used that bar. 
If we're going off a of battle rap IQ, you should have never used that bar. Whether it's true or not, because you saying that bar now makes everybody think it's true. So just my opinion, that's that's my whole statement back to you. Like, if he doesn't say that bar, then we have a real argument about is it true? Because he's been saying it's not true. Geechee saying it is true. Him saying that bar, he let us know that it's true. Like, y'all have to stop moving the goalposts. We're not going to do too many hypothetical situations. If nothing happened to me, I'm not doing hypothetical. That's like Geechee coming back and saying, hypothetically, if I snitched, at least I only got the person one year. Why would you do a hypothetical to something that's not true? I'm not about to be here and do... If something never happened to me, I'm not saying a bar to get reaction when it didn't happen. Because everybody's going to say, DNA, then why'd you make up the bar? Because now you believe it happened. I'm not doing that. I'm not, I've never done that. I've never, I've never had a situation and did a rebuttal to something that's not true. If I rebuttaled it, it's because the bar hit or I rebuttaled it because it has some truth to it. I'm not rebuttaling a lie for reaction because now I'm making people believe that it's true. So that's what I'm saying. He jammed himself up. He was supposed to just, I don't know, not say nothing about it. Just leave it how it is. If it's not true. Why do the why do a bar about it? Why do a bar about it if, if it has no validity to it? That's what I'm saying. So that's the other reason. And last but not least, this is my main thing, right? And and when I'm saying this, of course, at this point, Easy's going to take this as hate. Whoever loves him is going to take it as hate. But my whole thing is I think Easy has a role in battle rap and he's not. He, he has the role, but he's not understanding the role. He turned himself into the bad guy. But now he doesn't want to be the bad guy. When you're saying, yo, this person's hating on me, this person's doing this, you're talking crazy. So you got to understand that. That's just like me, right? I can't get mad at people saying, yo, Jerry beat you. DNA, how'd you happen? Leading up to the battle with Jerry, I was talking crazy. I was talking crazy. So if I'm talking crazy, and now people are holding me accountable for talking crazy... I can't call it hate. I got to call it you reap what you sow. You running around telling Shug he ain't worth it. You running around telling John John unless it's 50, you ain't battling him. You running around declining battles with me. You running around telling such and such he got to wait to battle you. You you doing all of this. You, you're playing the bad guy role good. But then when it don't go your way, you don't want to play no more. You got to keep playing the game. You got to keep playing the game. It was simple. You're supposed to come out after this battle. Be like, yo, listen. Look all what a nigga had to do to beat me. Look at everything he had to do to beat me. I promise y'all it won't happen again. And you're supposed to call out the next opponent. This is fun. This is entertainment. Don't take it too serious. That's why I'm saying he can't, he, he got the role. He's the man right now. I will give him that. He's hot. He's scorching. You put that man's name in the title, your views are, sh are going through the roof. So then understand the game. Understand after you talk crazy to a nigga like Shug, that's a legend, that putting pain in this game, of course he's waiting for you to lose. Of course. It's part of the game. And you know damn well if Shug lose, you on his helmet. You couldn't wait for Jerry to get me. You was predicting me to lose every match all year and you was wrong all year. You finally caught one. I didn't even watch your recap, but I know it was funny. I know you threw some slick shit in there. So as you should, it's part of the game. I don't, me personally, I don't like when people only like one side of the game because then that, that's giving vibes like a bully. You can't only like the game when the game is working for you. You know what I mean? You can't love the game when the game is only working for you. I love the game. Only part I don't like about the game is the drama because I'm not a drama type of guy. So Forgive me on that, but I love the game when it was. I kept my chin up and my head up high when I took the elder Jerry. I keep my chin up, my head up high when I take my 95% of my wins. And I stay on camera all the time. I don't get bitter about it because it's part it's, it's, it's what we do. So that's what I'm saying. Like you you took on the bad guy role. You was loved. Let's not let's not get it twisted. The easy hate didn't come pop up out of nowhere. It was self-inflicted. It was self-inflicted. It wasn't, it wasn't. Like, people turned on him. He went at URL, right? Not quietly, viciously. Got busy. Stirred up a whole pot. Created a whole ripple effect. Got URL dealing with this shit 365. He did that. Shout out to him. It's fire. Right? Worked out for him and all that. YouTube popping. 
um, league popping, you know what I mean? Doing numbers, talking crazy to battle rappers. I, I'm good on you. Yeah, not right. Everything you're supposed to do. But then, no, what I'm saying fire, I'm saying it's fire for him. I mean, obviously he got what he wanted. He's the algorithm. All I'm saying is when it don't go your way, you can't say you don't want to play the game no more. You got to keep your chin up high. You got to realize the mistakes you made because you did make some mistakes in this matchup. That's why I watched the battle over and over, right? Because I know the mistakes I made versus Jerry. And any other time I took it out, regroup from it, and you're going to be you good. Th this is my whole thing. This battle only hurts him if he allows it to hurt him. If he just move on, say I took the L, or don't argue to people that say you took the L, get back in the ring, clip somebody immediately, this shit is, we're not talking about this no more. And let's really think, now that Geechee did what he did with this angle, it's going to be very difficult for somebody to use it in the same way. So we all got to go through that. We all got that one thing that, um... We all got that one thing that um that we had to get over, you know what I mean? All everybody had different angles, but the moment we was able to, you know what I mean, get that away, it's back to regularly scheduled programming. So I just feel like, you know what I mean, you gotta own up to them. That's my opinion. I respectfully disagree. I don't think I don't think the battle is close. I don't. I don't. And you know me, I'm not a move the goalpost guy, but I judge every battle differently because every battle's not the same. Some battles come down to round. Some battles come down to impact. Some battles come down to feel. Every battle is different. Math and T-Rex, that battle is mirrors this battle, except Math wasn't um easy wasn't losing as bad as Math. If you understand what I'm saying. Math might have won that whole battle off of one round. Third, first two, Rex, right? And there's still a lot of people that give that battle to Rex. But I'm just saying, people judge bad, people judge score battles differently because every battle don't come down to the same thing. Geechee stumbled like four times. Absolutely, he did. But Easy, so we don't take point. Easy was taking points away from niggas talking through rhymes. So we don't take points away from him. Geechee couldn't even get his rebuttal off. And Geechee kind of stumbled. Right, if we just calling it, if we if we still calling it down the middle, Geechee stumbled because he's getting heckled. Are we going to factor that into that he's not three blocks away from Philadelphia in Camden, New Jersey? Like we got we got to fit we factoring things in. Let's factor it in, and we're not going by the crowd because the crowd didn't want Geechee to win. That's why up into the third round it was like one one or or easy two zero. But I'm not basing it off the crowd. I'm basing it off of what I seen with my own two eyes. What I seen with my own two eyes, I agree with hardcore. What I seen with my own two eyes is round two and three. I never seen easy look like that. And people forget about rounds, forget about impact. To me, my personal opinion, I feel like a person wins a battle clearly. When they change the perception of how you look at the other opponent. And I feel like that happened in this battle. That's why I have Geechee clearly winning. Because in my opinion, I never felt like Easy was that emotional. So when I'm watching a battle, right? Because as much as people want to say it's not the truth or not. Something, something that's not the truth doesn't bother me. I'm just being honest. I can't speak for everybody else. Somebody else could be like, lying on me doesn't. But it depends on what you're lying on me about. Right? So if you're not lying on me about being a snitch, if you're not lying on me about being a pedophile, being a rapist, or being homosexual, I don't care about the lie. I really don't. Right? I say those four because those four are detrimental to your brand and your career. People have lied and said my mom's retarded. You see me act like that? No, because it's not true. People lied and said that I share a car with Kayshawn, but I don't know how to drive. Never seen me react like that. 95% of the things they say in battle rap, I slept on Clip's couch. Never seen me get mad about that. Said Charlie Clip's right for me. Never seen me get mad about that. Almost everything they said about me in battle rap has been a lie. And I've never talked through nobody's rounds and never got mad. You know why? 
Because it's not the truth. Why would I get mad about somebody lying? That's what I'm saying. And it's not a detrimental lie. And then better yet, right? I got my chance to tell you how I feel about it after. Like, I got a chance to tell you, okay, everything you just said was a lie. And I get to break it down. I get to boom, 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 boom. But I'm saying you're messing up the battle when you're talking through somebody's rounds. You got a YouTube channel. You got your rounds that you can reply back. You got a whole lot of ways you can answer a lie in battle rap instead of talking through somebody's rounds. And I didn't approve when people talk through Easy's rounds. And I said that, even though Goods is my man, I said, I don't agree with that. And I'm saying that I don't like him when he does it. That's the thing. I keep the same energy. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I got, I made a moment in battle rap by somebody talking through my rap. Rookie mistake. Shout out to Twerk. But I don't, I don't condone that. So it ain't like I'm switching the goalposts like, hey, Easy's talking through rounds. So now I'm going to act like I don't like people talking through rounds. But before I liked it. No, I never liked it. I don't I feel like that is a bad um I feel like that's a bad that's bad sportsmanship. I don't I don't think anybody should be doing that. If you say a couple things here and there, it's cool, but I don't think you should be definitively talking through somebody's rounds. And I think the same way Easy made that a big issue in all the other battles that he had, it's a big issue in this one because it shows that you are af affected by what's being said. The third round is more important than the first two. Absolutely. I'm saying that. I feel like the battle I feel like the battle um changed from the third round. I have no problem saying that. I think if Geechee didn't have that third round, it's definitely a debatable battle that can go either way. I feel like the battle was here and here, and the third round put a big separation. It wasn't a third round that won the battle. It was a third round that said, Good night. That that's all I'm saying. I don't feel like it was just like, okay, that was a hot third round. Like, let's remember, right? Let's look at the effects of it. Because I forgot to mention that. And then we're going to talk about who Easy should battle next, who Geechee should battle next, and everything else. Right? This Geechee third round. First of all, shout out to Geechee Gotti, man. Let me give him his flowers. He came in the game years after me. He's made his mark as a West Coast legend in battle rap. He's making his mark as a battle rap legend in general. His IQ's there. He gives back to the culture. Started up his own league. Took on all type of competition that's possibly able to take on. Big shout out to Geechee Gotti, man. He deserves his flowers. But the real reason why Geechee won this battle, aside from anything else, this might be the most viral clip in battle rap history outside of battle rap. Outside of battle rap, I don't know one round or clip that's been more viral than this one. The only thing I could think of is Lux Third vs. Cal. But even that ain't touching these. It's people that have no inkling about battle rap that are watching this clip and now interested in, yo, what is this? What is that? And I mean, for obvious reasons. For obvious reasons, right? We know why it's going viral. We, I'm not here to touch on that. But I'm just saying, it's still an art and being masterful on knowing how to articulate the material to where it's digestible. Because if all that was said in a lyrical, miracle way, it wouldn't be going as viral as it is. It's going viral because of the way it's being able to digest. Anybody can digest that. Somebody that doesn't understand our culture can digest what's being said, which is why it is more effective. So I feel like... The art in that and knowing, right? Because everybody else that did the angle wouldn't have won at Remy. A lot of people would have been scared, as they should be. A lot of people wouldn't even have tried that. So all of it is all of it is masterful art on how he knew how to execute, where to execute, who to execute with. All of it was just genius. You got to give credit for that. So that's why I'm saying also, it's a win-win. When you say, oh, he talked to Remy, not easy. That would be the case if she had nothing to do with the rumors. She had something to do with the situation. Therefore, he had to incorporate her. You know what I mean? Like, and the reason, aside from me not being a messy guy, the reason why I don't go into the particulars is because I don't know if it's true or not. I'm not here to decipher that. And I got a great relationship with Pat Poos. That's my man. So, out of respect for him, I'm not, you know what I mean? Um, and, I, and I know Remy too. But I'm cooler with Pat Poos, but... 
out of respect for him, I'm not I'm not diving into, you know what I mean, the particulars. It may be, it may not. I mean, I don't really, you know me, I really I could care less. Like <laughs> I don't I don't care. But um hardcore, I definitely agree. I definitely agree. I definitely feel like this battle needs to drop on YouTube tomorrow. Or Sunday. It got to drop before the week is out. If you're trying to capitalize on what's going on for your channel, that shit has to drop. That shit is the hottest shit in battle rap right now. It is the hottest shit in battle rap right now. I don't think it's nothing hotter than this situation right now. I mean, okay, so just my opinion. Let's touch on that before we go to... um. Who easy should battle next and who Geechee? <coughs> God bless me. Um, so just in my opinion made a good statement. He said, my problem is mainly how people switch up to judge battles to their bias. All right. Let's dive into this. I spoke to Easy last year, 2022. Right? He was still with URL. Everything was still good. So when you say that, you have to know that the coach is going to turn on you. I told him this. Right, not being a hater, not being somebody that wanted to see it, it is the inevitable. So as an artist, you have to prepare yourself for it so you're not in the the delusional state of really believing they love you. That's why he has the response that he has right now, because he didn't believe it could happen. So again, you have to blame that on him because you're around Surf, you're around Tay Rock, you're around me, right? And I'm not best friends with him, but I'm saying we converse. I've told him this. He laughed at me and said it'll never happen. I got it figured out. So who can you blame when they wind up switching on you if you are so delusional that you think you are one of one? You think you're exceptional. You think that you you bypass the line. In battle rap, I don't like it. I don't like that they switch and they turn on you. But if we if everybody else got to deal with it, you got to deal with it. You're not above it. So he felt like he was above it. So now when it's happening, it's hard to digest. Right? Because... If Easy and Geechee, right, if Geechee didn't have that third round and I do my same recap, the comments are DNA's a hater. DNA just wants to battle Easy. DNA, you know what I mean, it's boring. Boom, boom, boom. DNA just got 30 by Jerry West. Of course, you're going to get a couple of those in there any anytime. I always got haters. And you know what I mean? The mother bees and the carpenter bees, they're strong. But majority of the recap comments was... DNA's talking that shit. DNA speaking facts. Geechee got him. Therefore, the turn has happened. Right? And the reason why, even though as an artist, when I first seen people turn on me, turn on other battle rappers, I didn't like it. But as the years went on, I started liking it. You know why? <clears throat> because it makes a battle rapper. When you realize that 90 majority of these people in this culture only give a fuck about the culture, it gives you a certain type of energy when you go into the battle, knowing that this can go any way at any time and you're not just going to have the crowd relying on you. It makes you a better battle rapper because you have to process and digest that they're not always going to be on my side. So I always tell artists, you don't show me you great until you're able to deal with them turning on you and you bounce back from it. Because some people get so caught up in them believing that they really love you, they don't know how to adjust now that the, that, that, now that the tables have turned. Let's be honest. Kayshawn had one of the greatest runs in battle rap history. When they flipped that switch with Chilla, they flipped it. He was doing the same thing that he's been doing. They just got tired of seeing him win, right? When he battled easy. If he would have battled easy a year prior when he was in that run, they would have said he beat him. So first the chiller battle happened. Then the hollow battle happened. Then the easy battle happened, right? So now that they got the three battles out the way where they can say he went on a three-year winning streak, now we want to say he's on a three-game losing streak and he falls back. And don't pop back out until real sick. Okay, now we love him again. That's just how battle rap goes. 
right? Tay Rock, he played his cards the best way you could play your cards. Tay Rock, Tay Rock, KC, I like that. Hold on, I'm gonna get to the Tay Rock comment. I don't know DNA. I think it's just a clear L, not a necessary turn. KC, you right, but he's making you the turn because he doesn't know how to digest the L. You gotta remember, right? <clears throat> When you watch a movie, you know it's just acting. But as you get so deeply rooted in the story of acting, you start hating the actor that's portraying the character. Right? And you know it's fake. But you so... That's just us as humans. We get so deeply rooted into the character. So now that he's being the bitter character after taking the L, and he's not realizing, okay, I got to take this L... And be honorable. I got to take this L and you know I mean? not look bitter. The turn is happening more. So he's his own worst enemy. That's why I said this loss only stings if he allows it. If he understands what's happening and knows, he can get everybody right back on his side. But the turn is happening based on the actions that happen after. So, th so that's what I'm trying to say. He's going to make it a full turn. To where it could just be, ah, he lost that one. I don't want to see him get crazy with the next person. So it's all, your decisions in ring and out ring play a heavy part. And people don't really understand that. But what I was saying with Tay Rock was, Tay Rock played, um, Tay Rock played, Tay Rock played the cards better than no other. Tay Rock played the cards better than no other. What I mean by that is Tay Rock always um always was Tay Rock every battle. And then I believe it was the Goods battle when they um when they just, you know, switched on him. And they was just like, all right, Rock, we seen you too much. You've been on top for too long. All right, it's over. And I also say you gotta credit the person that's able to make the turn. So Goods approach, Goods, Goods style. Is is why we also credit the turn happening because Goods knew how to address it and Goods knew how to make people look at the situation a bit differently. Like, oh, okay, that's what they be doing. So whenever you um whenever you have that ability to do that, it's gonna count. So that's why you give flowers to Geechee because his approach and his attack was like no other that's attacked him. Same thing for Goods. So, you know what I mean? Like I said, just to summarize the battle up, I don't think this is a career-ending loss. Like, don't get it twisted. I don't think easy stock went down. I don't think none of that happened. I think it all depends on how he approaches it and what is his next move. And that's going to be the deciding factor to um, what happens next.